Is TB500 the breakthrough compound that could change the way we think about injury recovery? It's often promoted as a peptide that can speed up healing, reduce inflammation, and even help with muscle and tendon repair. That's the promise of TB500, but does it actually deliver on the hype? Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine physician practicing in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I've treated thousands of patients with tendon, muscle, and joint injuries. In this video, I'm going to break down the science behind TB500. I'll explain what it is, what the research really shows, and give you my take on whether this is a therapy worth considering. TB500 is a synthetic peptide designed to mimic a natural protein in the body called thymosin beta-4. Thymosin beta-4 is found throughout human and animal tissues, and it plays a key role in wound healing, reducing inflammation, and supporting tissue repair. Because producing the full thymosin beta-4 protein in a lab is expensive and unstable, researchers developed TB500 as a shorter fragment that's easier to manufacture, but thought to carry many of the same regenerative effects. And that's why TB500 is marketed as a research peptide for recovery. People hope it can help with muscle injuries, tendon problems, or healing after intense training. The big caveat though is that TB500 is not FDA approved, and most of the evidence comes from animal studies or anecdotal reports rather than rigorous human trials. So the real question is, what does the science actually say? What evidence do we have right now that TB500 can do what people claim, and where are the gaps that still leave us in the dark? Let's first talk about what thymosin beta-4 actually does. When the body's injured, this peptide triggers angiogenesis. This is the growth of new blood vessels. It calms inflammation, and it prevents apoptosis, which is known as programmed cell death. Together, these effects create the ideal environment for damaged tissue to repair and regenerate. Studies show that thymosin beta-4 can accelerate healing in muscle, tendon, and ligament injuries by stimulating cell migration, increasing blood supply, and reducing scar tissue formation. In animal models, it's been shown to improve blood flow to damaged limbs, enhance stem cell survival, and even support regeneration of injured cartilage and intervertebral disc cells. These effects all point toward better recovery from the types of injuries we see commonly in athletes and active individuals. Another interesting area is its role in anti-inflammatory signaling. Thymosin beta-4 appears to downregulate NF-kappa-beta, one of the major pathways that drives chronic inflammation in joints and soft tissue injuries. By calming that pathway, it may reduce pain and stiffness while protecting cells from further degeneration. This makes it particularly relevant to chronic tendinopathies, osteoarthritis, and overuse injuries. The peptide also seems to interact with other key repair pathways which are known to regulate how tissues rebuild after trauma. Through these mechanisms, thymosin beta-4 has been linked to improved healing of ligaments, bone, and even skin wounds, all of which share biological similarities to how tendons and muscles recover. So far, most of the strong data we have on thymosin beta-4 and its derivative TB500 comes from animal and preclinical studies. But early human trials are beginning to emerge. Phase 1 safety studies in healthy volunteers show that thymosin beta-4 is well tolerated even at higher doses with no dose-limiting toxicities. A phase 2 trial in patients with severe dry eye demonstrated both safety and meaningful symptom improvement, proving that the compound can be active in humans. And in cardiology, a small pilot study using thymosin beta-4 to prime stem cells in patients with acute heart attacks showed improved exercise capacity and heart function without major complications. Now, I also want to mention my own clinical experience with TB500. Over the past few years, I've had a handful of patients who have decided to try it out for their injuries, and the results I've seen are mixed. Some patients report that it helped. They felt the recovery was faster, their pain was reduced, and they were able to return to activity a bit sooner. But others come back and told me, eh, it didn't seem to do anything at all no noticeable difference compared to just sticking with rehab and standard treatment. And that variability is important. It tells us two things. First, there may be something here worth studying further because a subset of patients really do feel better. But second, we can't assume it's going to work across the board, and without controlled trials, we can't separate out what's true effect versus placebo, or just the natural healing process. That's why when I talk to patients about TB500, I describe it as promising but unproven 
prove it. The biology makes sense, and the early data suggests that it is safe. But we need large, well-designed human trials in orthopedic and sports medicine injuries before we can confidently recommend it. Now, if you're thinking about trying it, you need to understand the risks. TB500 is not FDA approved. We don't know the long-term safety profile. We don't know what happens if you use it for months at a time or combine it with other therapies. So if you do choose to experiment it, go in with eyes open and realize that right now it's still very much an experimental therapy. So we've talked about TB500 and why the science is still in its early stages. But there's another peptide that gets just as much attention, BPC-157. Some people claim it's even more powerful for healing tendons, ligaments, and muscle injuries. Check out this next video where I'll break down the research on BPC-157 and show you what it really can and can't do for recovery.